I'm back to do another review and unboxing of, in this case, the newest generation of Nerf gun, dubbed Rival. So, right off the bat, you can see that this Nerf gun is kind of going the direction of more grown up as opposed to the many other Nerf gun series. And, um, I said earlier that this was the newest generation, and I'll quickly def define what I consider generation versus series for Nerf. And this is important, so we'll go over this um, quickly, but it's still important. Um, Nerf series can be anything from, like, they have what a series called Rebel, which is, you know, Nerf guns, but they're pink, and they're like crossbows, and it's supposed to, you know, appeal to younger girls, because um, that's evidently a demographic they haven't been grabbing yet, so why not? And, of course, they bandwagon on things that are popular at the time, such as zombies. Um, so there's a whole series that's Nerf zombies, and they're all like shotguns and stuff, you know, to take on, the, you know, the popularity of The Walking Dead and all that stuff. So those would be series, but generations are when the Nerf gun actually, I would say, introduces a real new technology. Um, and in Nerf world, that's almost always uh, based on what it shoots. So... Um, being a Nerf fan since the 90s, I mean early 90s, <laughs> um, I can tell you we started off with big ping pong sized foam balls and that was what Nerf gun shoot, shot. Then it went to big foam darts, then it went to dart, littler darts but with suction cups on the front and they could stick the thing so you could shoot the wall and the mirror and whatnot. Then it went to darts which didn't have the suction cup but they had nose cones so they flew further and some of them even whistled. Then it went to kind of a hodgepodge of all those things. And then it went to discs. That was the, I, before this, I'd say that was the, the next grace generation was the discs. It had these flying little mini frisbee things. Um, and then now we're on this, which is back to Nerf balls. But the Nerf balls are a little different this time. Instead of being ping pong size, they're this size. So giving you an idea, I have one open in my hand here. So if you... Um, and you can notice if the camera picks it up, you see those little uh, dimples. So much like a golf ball, it helps it fly further. And it is still, you know, you can still squeeze them, but it's a lot more dense than they used to be. The other one really felt like foam, as where this feels kind of like halfway between foam and rubber. Okay? And yes, they do bounce. So, okay. So, back to the gun. Okay. So... Um, before we get into the gun, I know we're all anxious to get there, but um, I wanted to go over uh, what I call shelf presence. I think that's important. As any person who's in marketing or advertising will tell you, the box can make it or break it sometimes as far as if the purchase is made. This, I have to give them credit. I think they did an outstanding job with this. Why? First of all, what's important, right? What are we here for the review for? To learn about this newest gun. And they're telling you that. Boom! There it is. The gun takes up 90% of the box. And it's not a, a drawing or a stylized version. It's basically a photo like that. It kind of has that tactical loadout, you know, screen. Like if you've ever played the early Rainbow Six games, it kind of gives you that opinion of it. So I like that. Next, this is a great idea of showing the ammo. Again, this is what makes the new Nerf gun the new Nerf guns is what they shoot. And they also even give you this little window here so you can actually feel the ammo type, which is good. That stops people from opening the box. Um, so what else? And um, also, Nerf, yes, it's a Nerf product, but notice how Nerf is probably one of the smallest text on there. Again, this is more of, you, you know, you don't need the Nerf to be huge to know that this might be something I want to buy. Um, all right, and then, okay, down here they have some features. You know, it's motorized. It has a velocity of, uh, what, 100 feet per second and uh, accurate, so I guess it shoots straight, or at least hopefully. And it is powered by batteries, of course, since it is motorized, and you're going to use 6C cell. So, yeah, it's going to have a decent amount of batteries in it and relatively bigger batteries. Um, okay, and this particular model, if you haven't already seen, is the Zeus. <laughs> they didn't go with a minor god by any chance. No, Zeus. All right, so this has to be powerful, right? Okay, going on the back, pretty much this similar to the front of the um, box. And, um, you know, okay, there's so some little key features. Uh, Ambidextrous magazine release. I thought that was pretty, I like that feature. 
Um, and, oh, yeah, I should say, you could probably see they have this blue versus red scheme going here, see? And that's the two colors you can get the gun in, blue or red. Of course, I got the blue one because it looks more realistic. Um, well, as opposed to, you know, fire orange or uh, fire truck red. <laughs> so, and also, um, you can see here, they're kind of trying to, I guess, illustrate this is for the older crowd as far as, you know, nerf, or I would say, you know, teens, you know, maybe into 20s. And that's also something that I think they're trying to demonstrate this is for the more serious, um, you know, nerfer, <laughs> if that's even a term. Okay, so, uh, let's hear, um, so, with, so without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and open this up and see what it All can right. do. So, I got it open finally. Um, it had uh, those um, kind of ropey like ties that you have to cut with a knife or whatever. So, anyway, but what, what comes in the box is obviously the gun. So, there it is. You get the ammo that you saw from the front of the box when it was closed. And there's um, this little accessory here on the bottom. These little black, I think these are like tactical rails. I haven't installed those yet, but that came in there. You do get, obviously, instructions. Right there, okay. And, but what was immediately obvious upon opening it is that this uh, instruction card was actually taped to the gun. So, I, I guess, like, read this first, you know, before use. So, um, what I'll, what this show, what this says, I'll basically demonstrate for you. It's what to do in the event of a ball jam. Um, or how to clear jam. <laughs> so, but, um, all right, before, I'll, well, I'll get into that. The magazine also was not in, actually installed in the rifle at the um, time I put it in there, just to make sure I knew how to load it in correctly. Um, okay, but let's get to what this card said. It, and the reason I'm going to go into that is not only is it important to know, but it also tells you how this thing actually works. So, um, well, the secret essentially lies behind this door, which is, well, first, before we do that, we have to get the magazine out. So, you see back here, there's this little lever. So, you pull that down, then you can just pop it out, like so, and take it out. All right. So, so you slide that forward, and what you can see in there is two wheels. See them? Those big orange guys that are, all right? So, this thing basically operates on the, what I call, um, it pinches, squeezes, and then pushes, <laughs> okay? So, I know, jokes abound right there, but how it works is you have two wheels. The ball, um, which I have that loose one open here, okay, see? So this little guy is gonna come in through the magazine, and of course it's pushed down the magazine by a spring, right? So it pushes the balls forward. And then it ends up in here, like about, right about there, okay? Of course, and those two wheels are spinning, so, um, kind of think like tires, um, two tires, and it works like, uh, what's the thing, those things that pitch uh, baseballs, you know, in the batting cages, kind of works like that. So as the ball comes in, it gets basically sucked in because these wheels are rolling, this one's going this way and this one's going that way, so it basically pinches in the ball, it squeezes it when it gets to the middle there, because you can see the space between them is obviously less than the diameter of the ball. So it squeezes the, little, the ball, and then it pushes it out. So you have it pinching, basically sucking it in, compressing it, kind of like storing up energy and gripping, and then it finally flings it out the front, and of course it comes out the barrel there. Whoosh. Okay, so that's how it works, and to do that it needs uh, six C batteries, and those are going to go up in this area here. This back opens up, and then the batteries go along the length of the gun. Again, good idea, because it keeps the weight kind of distributed, so that's a pretty slick idea. Okay, so then once you're done clearing the jam, then of course you close this door, and then you put in your magazine, which you probably reloaded, and go back to what you were doing, which is probably shooting that stuff. Um, Alright, so there are two triggers. And the top, this trigger is to essentially send a new ball into the rolling wheels, a projection. And this wheel is kind of your rev up. So this revs up the, the, the wheels. So obviously you push this trigger first before you push this trigger or not much is going to happen. So I'm not sure how noisy this is yet, but since it does obviously have to have the wheels spinning, it's probably not going to be the most quiet thing in the world. So stealth options probably gone down quite a bit. But 
we'll know when I actually fire it up. So before I do that, let's go into the style of this, um, the style of they're going for this uh, Nerf gun. Um, this is this is what they would call a bullpup uh, style, and if you don't know what that means, it means the trigger is in front of the magazine. So um, a real life gun that uses a setup very similar to this, and also a horizontal magazine, would be the um, FNP90. So again, I like the fact that they're going after a realistic look um, and design of Nerf guns, and not this Gonzo crazy, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so you get the idea. So, um, all right. I'm gonna. Oh, and then it has tactical rail top. These. I wonder if these flip up. Well, I'll figure that out in a bit. And there you go. So overall. Oh, and I did. Um, I weighed this thing. Um, it is. Um, with no batteries. And just the empty magazine installed. So no batteries, just gun and empty magazine. It's 2.2 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the batteries, and of course the weight's going to go up. But since it's supposed to, I guess, feel somewhat like a real gun, that might not be the worst thing. Okay, let me get this thing powered right. up here. So um, I went ahead and uh, opened up the back where the battery tray is accessible from. So that's what it looks like. And you can see I went ahead and used uh, Energizer. Um, and... Uh, I suppose if you wanted to make this a little lighter, you could maybe use some of those uh, newer batteries, uh, the lithium ion ones, uh, or, sorry, the lithium batteries, because you know those are lighter. So that's, I guess, a thought. But so far, I'm ready to go. Got this. And actually, this amount of batteries actually does make sense when you think about how much you're going to be revving those wheels. You're going to need the increased capacitance of uh, C battery as opposed to like having triple A's or double A's even. So. All right, I'll go ahead and install this now. All right, so I got the batteries in it. I loaded it up with all 12 um, balls that were included with the item. And there she be. Okay, um, the inclusion of the batteries and the balls, although the balls are probably light, so it's mainly just the batteries, but including everything, it is a total of uh, 3.2 pounds now so the batteries increased it by an even pound so not too bad um, it's not it's not too heavy obviously but I mean it is uh, it is not your just normal air powered nerf gun because you won't well, yeah um, oh one thing I forgot to um, point out earlier is there is this little safety switch here <laughs> kind of has that nice big thumb lever kind of like an HK pistol um, so you do have a actual safety on it um, and uh, Oh, and I was going to show you another thing about it. Um, I'm going to remove the magazine here. Oh, the safety is not ambidextrous. The safety is only on this side. But the magazine release is on both. So, um, okay, taking that out. Um, <laughs> you saw that one ball that was in the chamber just roll out. So we'll do good gun user protocol make sure it's actually truly cleared yeah all right and we removed the ammo source the magazine and the chambered round rolled out okay so now that we're good with that i was going to show you that um even with the um safety disengaged it does make a nice click i like that that's cool okay so it, um with the safety disengaged and you try to use the rev um trigger i'll call it the rev trigger to rev it up it doesn't do anything um, so, in here, I'm not sure if the camera's going to catch us or not, but I'll try. Um, if you see there's like some knobs and whatnot in there, little levers and what have you, this actually, this is the magazine, this actually pushes one of those levers which acts as like an on-off switch, so if it's not depressed by the magazine being in there, it won't allow you to just to rev it up. So that's probably a safety thing, I guess, or something, but anyway, so... Just to make sure, because I didn't do that first, and I thought, oh, man, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put it in and give it a test fire and kind of a moment of what we can wait okay. for. So I got it all loaded up and uh, ready to fire. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you. Actually, I'm pretty impressed by, impressed by this thing. So, so we'll go ahead and flip off our safety, rev it up using the secondary trigger on the bottom here.
All right, well, keep in mind, that curtain is a heavy-duty curtain. I mean, it's pretty high quality, and then the back, it also has a liner in back to make it, like, extra thick. So, I mean, you know, to deform that, pretty darn good, I must say. Um, oh, what I was going to say, uh, interest, when I'm loading this magazine, the, um, two cool things about the magazine. Well, one, the fact that it's clear, so you can see, I have um, two rounds, because there's one you can see, and then one's actually in the feed mechanism there or the propulsion system so that's two so I just think what you can see plus one right so you can do a quick ammo check the other cool thing about it is is that when you load it um, actually insert the magazine um, the first round jumps into the um, into the wheel section so it's a visual check that everything's engaged so pretty darn nice I like that um, of course you heard the wheels they're loud <laughs> so stealth uh, that's not happening unless your opponents are deaf um, but uh, and but I mean it does rev up quick. That was one of my concerns that you'd have to hold the trigger, the sec this trigger down here for like a whole like 30 seconds before you could fire, and not really. It actually revs up pretty darn quick. Of course, it does seem to have like you know when you just start it, but then about what a second you're good to go. So here we'll just do that. So you can listen it there, and you'll hear when you could start shooting. Okay, so you heard when it really sounds, when it really starts reeling, then you know you're good to go. But that doesn't take long to achieve. So, I mean, by the time you bring it up, you could almost have that done. So if I start here. So that ain't too bad. Alright, so I devised a little test to try to figure out how powerful this new Nerf gun is. This green cup, which is sitting on the ledge of my bathtub here, weighs uh, 0.9 pounds. So almost a pound. And I'm going to come out to this distance out here and shoot it and see if I can knock it off. Uh, and this distance is um, 6.75 feet. So, set that up. All right. And, and so I'm in the prone position here. And uh, let's see if I can knock that guy down. All right. Make sure I'm at the right distance. Okay, yep, there I am. All right, here we go. Success. There you go. So from 6.75 feet, it has at least 0.9 pounds of force. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I uh, must say, I'm pretty impressed. Um, I was worried that it would jam, um, especially since the first thing uh, you saw opening the box was how to clear jam. But I haven't had jam yet, and that was about, what, the fifth volley of these things I shot. So, so far, so good. Um, and, yeah, it does shoot out with some considerable force. Um, again, I mean, this isn't paintball, so I know all you paintballers are going to say, oh, that's wuss stuff, blah, blah, but, you know, again, this isn't paintball, and I'm not going to shoot my, my nice curtain with paintballs, okay? So, um, you can play this indoors, and you're not going to put a hole in the walls or make everything a big mess. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is, and it isn't too bad, actually, so, um, yeah. Now, let's talk about the price point. Um, this, this whole setup here, without the batteries, was 50 bucks. And so um, this isn't, I mean, as far as a cheap nerfed gun for your kids, that probably isn't the bill. This isn't going to fit that bill. But if you're some semi-serious into this stuff and, you know, 50 bucks, eh, and this seems, I'll, I'll probably have a lot of fun with this. So it's worth it for me anyway. Um, the, there are masks. Um, I, I, I think we saw that earlier in the video on the box. Uh, I, I don't know if you really want to get pelted in the eye so with one of these, but I mean... Other than that, I don't really see these doing any injury. Um, so, I, yeah, the mask would probably be a good idea if you're going to actually shoot each other in the face, which, face it, yeah, you're going to be doing that, so get the mask. 